Right, uh, today a bit of a demonstration of uh, what I was saying about how cold it is. So I'm inside the garage at the minute. And you can see it's a bit, a bit dark. Let's see if we can get a bit of light on there. And uh, this is frost on the inside. Um, so when I'm breathing, it's uh, it's absolutely abysmal in here today. So we've got a few bits. I had a, a little trip to the DIY store yesterday. Got some uh, copper bends, solder, flux, so also some hard clamps, and then uh, as we go down here, I've got some 22 mil copper pipe. And in this box, a rather welcome delivery. So uh, that's the intake pipe. On there, uh, clips and a, and a filter, exhaust outlet, uh, well, hot air outlet, should I say? The uh, actual exhaust, exhaust pipe here, and then instructions, etc. Some um, air, air intake pipe. And then here we go. So I'm going to get this out. Let's have a quick look at it. One hundred because it's a bit heavy. Oh, we're going to make it. Yeah. Get that to one side. And here we have a diesel heater, 12 volt. Uh, there's a remote there, so you fill that with diesel. Connect this up to a 12 volt battery. To get the feed underneath. See there, you've got you can see the green fuel line, and then the this here. Oops, try and do it one hundred. So that's your air intake, that's your exhaust. Um, so I'm going to take the exhaust out the side. If we just go under the workbench, so the heater is going to sit about here. I'm going to take the exhaust out the side, round the back along the back of the wall, clamp it to the wall there, etc. Got a shift my compressor and welder. So I'm going to take it, there's quite a bit of movement to do, but I'm going to take it behind the on the wall there, up. And I've got to work out then where I'm going to send it. So my thoughts are, obviously that's the cable, get rid of that. Send it along the wall, see if I can get a bit of light on there. Send it along the wall. Might take it up, round, and through the side of the window frame. So take it through there. Alternatively, send it under the window frame and straight out of that wall outside. And then as it goes outside, drop it down so the water can get in. But that's got to be. You've got to exhaust the gases, uh, the diesel gas. Like a car, you've got to send them um, to outside. Obviously, I don't want to get carbon monoxide poisoning from it. So that's today's job. Try and get some heat in here so it makes it a little bit more comfortable to work. So I'm going to start off by clearing the space. Don't know if I can actually record it because I've obviously got to put you guys somewhere. So what I think I'll do is clear under there, get rid of that lot, um, and then I'll put the heater on the top there on the bench we'll start looking at that um, and then what I'll probably do is give you some updates throughout uh, as to you know once I've got the video so I've obviously not soldered a uh, copper pipe before I don't think it's any different to soldering wires but um, I've got the, the the kit and I've got a heat gun a blow gun and um, so I think that's what we'll do we'll, we'll make a start I'll uh, clear under there and then I'll bring you back all right I've mocked it up Put it on a couple of little bits of oops, hold the camera straight. Put it on a couple of little bits of wood. Um, I'm just going to put a couple of screws through there. Kind of figured it stops if there's any vibration, takes a little bit of it out. And the actual plan is to put um, PVC floor down, like the floor tiles, because as you can see here, we've got cracks in the concrete. It's cold anyway, with the cold coming up through the concrete. 
um, and also if you're kneeling down and such it's quite uh, heavy duty on the knees so as I say mocked it up giving enough clearance at the side of the bench I've just loosely put the exhaust in place and it's also not catching the floor with it being on the little blocks of wood so I'm going to send it to the back of the bench and then right angle it send it along that back probably underneath the, the back support leg I'm not going to fasten it to that because I'm not quite sure how hot the exhaust will get I'm told they get quite hot so I'm actually going to fasten it to the wall with the brass clamps so I think the next bit is to start measuring um, and get it done there's some wire in here so what I'm going to do is obviously make sure that doesn't get anywhere near the heat source down there so I'll probably just bring that up and fasten it to that back leg and take it up towards the on the top here have a couple of batteries uh, which I can then just keep them topped up and charged with the with the power source at the side there and um, so right I'll get some measuring done and I'll probably bring you back um, if I get it on the stand camera on the stand I'll probably uh, do it while I'm doing some uh, soldering of the pipe work right so my first cut which is going to go along the back of this bench is 1.7 uh, meters um, so I've cut this to length what I do find out is it's when you're doing stuff like this you find out what tools you do and don't have so I've got plenty of 15 mil pipe cutters but no 22 mil pipe cutters so I had to do it by hand it's not the best but it's we're not running gas or water through it so well we are running exhaust gases but we're not running natural gas so I've kind of deburred it um, this is where I kind of put a bit of a um, thing where I wish I'd paid a bit more attention to Matt Brown when he was doing the uh, plumbing in my house for me um, but I think I've remembered most of it so I know once you've cut it kind of just clean the edge just get rid of any oils and imperfections so I've done that uh, I've got my my copper 90 degrees let's try that so that goes on so then I bought some lead free uh, soldering paste flux paste this is where this might come a bit unglued but uh we'll just smear some of that around the end i think so once again apologies to matt for not watching him very closely or learning but uh, sure there's plenty of you out there shouting at the screen now saying you're doing that wrong or you're putting too much on but we'll see what happens next put the joints on just wait on the I've got a butane torch coming so I'll have to use this one for now so let's see if we can get this lit so let's hit the car and I've got solder Got to heat it and let it run in, allegedly. We'll see. Well, first time ever, but I've got full solder all the way around. It's not the tidiest of jobs, but as I say, it's, it's not it's not like I'm run, doing it in my house. I'm running uh, gas through it, natural gas, so it'll do what I need. Um, I'll let that cool and just test that, but that will be my first length that will go behind the um, bench like that, and I'll put a little 
section on there and join it to the exhaust pipe. What I'll probably do is take the exhaust pipe off, try and solder that together, and then I can put the exhaust pipe on. And it's got a um, Jubilee clip on there, like a clamp, um, so I'll be able to just wind that up. So my next job is once that's cooled at the other end, I'm going to basically put it at a 90 degrees, so it's going to go in that way. At the other end, it's going to go up. So at this end, we're going to be going upwards like that to send it up the back of the wall there. And then I'll just do some cuts and then send it through. So yeah, I'll carry on doing those. And when we've done, I'll bring you back and you can uh, ridicule or, or comment on uh, what sort of job you think I've made. And I've got a bit of an update. You can see in there, so I brazed you saw me braze that one in in this corner here. Let's see if I can uh, do a bit more light, it's not really good. So I've got the pipe running in through here, then I fastened it along the back, clamped it on, it goes into that corner. Uh, very poor light, apologies, and then basically send it up. comes just under the ledge. I'm hoping there's enough heat will have dissipated out of the pipe by then. See if I can get you some more light. Um, and I've actually found a hole right in the corner of the windowsill. So that might be, it's gone through the first course where the breeze block. So I've only got the stone to drill through. So I think I'm going to send it through there. Save some drilling my window frames and such like. So all I've got to do now is make so I just make that section there and then through and then connect my exhaust. Oh, well connect the, you can see good in the there. Connect that exhaust pipe up to the heater and start wiring the heater up. So apologies on the poor light on that. Um, I think I might have to give myself an additional light, but uh, I'll just cut the next pieces and then uh, I'll show you when we've bring you back in a minute. Right, so hope we can see that. So this down the bottom there is going to fit down there in the corner, and then we've got some weird and wonderful angles. Which when we put it in place, we'll go around the window ledge, um, and then it'll drop out there through the frame. Um, I just got to do drill a hole through the frame and then put a, a piece of pipe on there and solder that on and then clamp all this up and we're ready to go so we get in there um, just a bit more pipe work on there I think what I'll do is before I put the piece on there that goes out the window I think I'll just clamp all this on clamp it to the wall and then we'll have a look at the, the heater and try and fire that up on this video I think and then I can finish off the window area after but just to at least give this a test run and see if we've got heat finally because uh, I can hardly feel my fingers now so I need to get something in here um, right let's carry on so in the bag we've got sorted parts we've got an extendable air intake with the vent on the front of it so that will basically connect into the heater probably I'm going to need a small amount because I'm not going to be running this round I want it just coming straight out the front of the heater so I'll probably just cut that so I can clamp it on uh, a couple of Jubilee clips there so we'll basically clamp that and then we'll cut a small piece and we'll clamp that onto the front of the heater um, and then I can just rotate that as I need to I'll probably do it like that so it blows air into the workshop that's that piece so, I can cut that. so we've got an air filter get any large particulates out See if that's which way that's going to go. Oops. That should sit on there like that eventually. Yeah, so that's going to go underneath. And I'll probably just tie that to the leg of the workbench. That's going to sit under the uh, heater, sucking in cold air. See what we've got. So we've got a pipe clamp anyway for this. Yeah, I think it is. Got a couple of Jubilee clips. 
So I can fasten that on the top and I can clamp it underneath before I'm a bit of that clamp onto the uh, pipe underneath. Got another one, these aren't very good quality I'll be honest. Um, I think the heater, I'm in the UK, the heater cost me £100. So it's, it's, I think the, the, the class is Chinese diesel heaters um, on the T5 VW forums. Um, these aren't great, so I've got some better ones I'll probably use there. Looks like we've got four nuts and bolts for bolting it to the floor, or if you were going to bolt it to a, inside a van, you can bolt it to the floor, but I'm just going to pin it to that wood, so I'll probably put some self tappers in. Um, I think this might be for the, actually these will probably be for the um, exhaust, metal exhaust pipe. I'm not going to bother using those because as we've run the copper pipe already, so all I need to do is secure that to secure the exhaust around the bottom of the heater, which I'll show you in a bit, and then clamp it, or I might try and solder it onto the copper wire, uh, copper pipe that I've got. So I think what we'll do is we'll get the heater up on the bench, and I can start cutting these and putting these on. Um, I'll probably put the exhaust pipe on, um, and then I can just, like I say, finish it off to put it onto the copper. Run the wires up the back of the bench so I can get them onto a battery, and then we're good to go. So let's get on with that. Right, got it up on the bench, got the little blocks of wood as I said, not the nothing other than just to give me a little bit more ground clearance, um, just so I can get the pipes and they're not touching the floor. Um, and also it might reduce a little bit of the vibration because I'm not actually bolting this down. So I've got a couple of little self-tapping screws, there's no real pressure or, or force on it, so I just need to uh, just pop them in just to give it some ground clearance. Just find this screwdriver. So the screws are quite small, so I've just put a couple of little washers on there as well. Yep. One done. Turn this on its side. So you've got the, you can see from there, you've got the warm the fuel pipe, the warm air going into there, or external air going into there. And that will be that pipe. Um, and then the exhaust going there. What's that clip? Off. We thought that through about how to uh, fasten that clip down. Let's see. That was uh, pretty ridiculous. Left the slot. Maybe. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. Didn't make sense earlier that they wouldn't allow you to have some way of tightening that bolt up. Right, that's that on. Um, I think what I'll do is I might just tie that. that down there because um, that's going to give me what I need or I might try and bring it near the front um, and tie wrap it on so at least then the air going in is, is hot we haven't got cold air going in so it's probably produce a little bit more heat but we'll I'll have a little think about that so the next is to get the exhaust system on I'm going to get a better jubilee clip for that one so that's the back. It's going to go like that. That's on. Just bend that round. 
flip this back over. You should see now we've got our exhaust going out the side, not too near to the heater. That'll connect into the copper pipe back there, and then on this side we've got some sort of. I could either put a clamp on there or we'll sort something out. Might be able to go through there. Actually, I might do that but I want to kick it because it's going to be in the way. So I think what I'll do for now, I'll just tie wrap it onto the side and then we'll come up with a better solution uh, for the air intake. Got a little, it comes with a remote control as well. Um, I'm thinking that comes out of there. So I mean, if I wanted to mount it somewhere, so I don't know if there's an extra wire, but that's the control panel. I'll put that back in because I'm going to need that. Um, next, got the heater thing on. So I don't think this fits, no it's the same diameter, so I'm going to have to put some of this pipe. I'll fasten that on first. So once that's fastened on you'll see that you can still turn that directionally. moving before but then you can just turn the, the heat and blow it wherever you want. So I think we need it's a very small amount. I think if you turn there. I say for my purposes it's not the you know it's not really tidy and neat but as I say it's gonna be under a bench out of the way. CD will kick in so I'm going to bury those so I can that turns as I want it excellent all that facing up so going to the back of it back of the machine we've got plenty of cable Twelve volt um, heater. So you've got an inline. As it looks like an inline fuse. Yep, that's twenty amp inline fuse in there. So what I'll do is I'm going to bring those up, put a couple of terminating connectors on, but uh, screw connectors so I can plug them onto the battery. And it's got to be at least a meter of cable, so that's plenty. So we'll chuck that underneath. What I'll do is I'll try and get a light and get you underneath as well. Um, I think actually what I'll do is I'll put it in, connect it up, and then I'll bring you down with a light so you can see um, actually what I need to do as well. It's a diesel heater. So I've got uh, 10 litres, two gallons of diesel. I'll probably just put a couple of litres in first just so to test it and run it. Um, and then we can go from there. Right, so, a little noisy, I'll be honest, uh, but I have got it on full at the minute just to try and get the, the workshop heated up a little bit. So you've got a little remote that you can use uh, on here, there's also a display. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll turn it down a little bit and you should hear it drop. So I've got my hand, let's go to the side. I can't put my hand any closer to it than that, otherwise it's, uh, I'll try going in more, it's just, it's just too hot to get my hand near. So it is blowing out quite a lot of heat, it is quite noisy, as you can hear now it's gradually quietening a little bit, because so I've turned it down to about, it goes up to 5.4, it's currently at, where's my key fob? Currently at 3.9, um, and it's still dropping down a bit on the on the noise. Uh, and if we just look right outside, I've had to extend the pipe. Couldn't get that side window open, so I've just extended the pipe, and then you can see outside um, it's it's venting. Um, it's actually looks, it's probably is something to do with 
uh, diesel smoke, but it does actually look more like steam than, than diesel smoke. Uh, one thing I have noticed, obviously you forget the whole bodged uh, bend in the thing and all this sort of stuff, that's all going when, when that goes straight out there, but is that this is actually, it's too hot to touch. So that gives me an idea that I may actually, um, before I finish off this section here, because that's only pushed in, I might actually do something else where I use the copper pipe as a, as a radiator in the um, in the workshop makes sense because then I'm not losing all the heat straight out the window you know out the exhaust sorry when it goes over there um, I might be able to use this as a, as a radi you know, radiant heat so I'm actually recovering some of the heat that's uh, that's in the pipes but overall yeah still um, cold but it's only been on a couple of minutes um, but yeah I'm quite happy with that so far um, I don't know if my battery is powerful enough because that, that display is dropping quite. Oh, there we go. It might just go into a sleep mode. Um, and I've also got a ticking, which you might be able to hear. The ticking from the pump. Now, the pump I thought would prime and fill the fuel line, but it doesn't, it just squirts a little bit of fuel through. I'm guessing this thing isn't a heavy use um, of, of diesel, but um, I might just have to have a look into that to see if. That I'm not damaging the pump. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Um, yeah, so far, happy with it. Um, plenty of heat. We'll just see how we get on. I'll just leave it running for an hour and see what happens. But uh, yeah, overall, good install. Hope you've enjoyed it. It's you know, just a little bit something different to the bikes. Um, and it, Hopefully means I can do a bit more when the weather's bad in here. Um, and it's also it's a good trial for me because I want to put one of these in the van, but maybe not this only one unit. You can get it where the, the pump on the bottom and the tank is are sort of in, in separate, so you can mount it in a, in a better space, or you know, I can put the tank underneath the van. Um, so that might be something I'll look at in the future. But uh, thanks for being with me. Hope it's been useful, um, if not fun. Um, and I'll see you next time. Cheers, bye.